the rust in here suggests that this brake has been maybe doing nothing. Ease it backwards. We need to make sure all our running gear is, is up to snuff. We um, loosened the lug nuts before we actually got it up on the blocks to get this tire up. So I'm going to start by bending this cotter pin back that keeps the castle nut from spinning. And I've got a hook tool to pull it out. It tends to work pretty well. Removing the castle nut, so-called because it looks like the top of a castle. It's a little trouble getting this washer loose. A little bit of rusty color on the spindle side. We'll see that better in just a second. Airstream says these are 12 inch brakes. We're not the original owners, so you know, things may have happened, have been replaced by somebody at some point. But no, nope, sure enough, here we have got 12 inch. Just wanted to double check. Our main goal was to get this open and see if we could inspect the brakes. Uh, based on the pad wear I'm seeing, I think we should order some new brakes immediately. We um, actually have extra bearings just in case things go bad. This is the same as this. I'm actually gonna just put this one back in. It seems fine for now, but I think what we'll do is replace all four of them at the same time when we do the brakes. Is there a part number in there? Mm, there's a sticker that's looking pretty bad. We, we have it all ready to take the other side tire off, so we may do that to see if that sticker is more legible. Okay. There's a couple telltale signs here. The number of bolts that hold it on. Then newer Airstreams have a completely different bearing and grease situation. Um, we should be able to identify these just based on what this looks like, having taken it apart. Looking at the back of the drum, you can sort of see that this is the um, inner bearing here, same as that. Now, this bearing is the outer. It goes essentially on the bottom and they stack like this on the spindle. Let me translate that to over here. You've got an inner bearing on the fatter part of the axle and an outer bearing. These are both nested essentially in the brake drum. But that's the mystery of the wheel bearings. Yeah, we roll with and a set at all times, but um, we're just gonna do all four. Okay. Pulling off the um, curbside drum now. I did talk to somebody, an Airstream dealer, with my concerns, and they said that um, it actually doesn't sound like the brakes are as severely worn as I was thinking. The pads on these trailer brakes actually start out pretty thin. Off comes this drum. Now's the moment of truth. Cobwebs. Cobwebs. So there's not a lot of pad life left on this side. It's actually much more worn than on the lead side. Today we're doing our Airstream trailer brakes and um, we're gonna film just this one, but we're actually gonna do all four. So we actually um, called the Airstream dealer locally and they didn't quite have enough in stock and they actually referred us to Camping World. So we picked the brakes up at Camping World and it's a pretty common fit. Everything should be direct fit and we shouldn't have any trouble. So I've determined if I um, knock it off with the hook tool, it actually runs up on the hook tool and doesn't land on the ground. The problem with landing on the ground is the grease picks up all the tiny rocks, which we don't want to reintroduce into the bearing when we put it back together. All right, so this is a um, five bolt attachment point. There's variations in this, so make sure you get the right backer, but um, I've pulled those off and it's as simple as just lifting it off. And now it's only attached by the two wires. So there's that one. Perfect, thank you. So these are all mounted on a backer plate, ready to go. All you have to do is connect the wires and bolt it on. I'm just stripping this wire a little bit longer. Just twist the wires together and then you put on the wire nut and then you tape it. The main thing I'm trying to do is keep the brake dust that's settled here off of the um, bearing off surfaces. The threads? Off the, yeah. Well, everything from the threads down to where the bearings sit. Um, the abrasive nature of the brakes on the bearing surfaces is not good. I've cleaned off the grease here so that I can look at the spindle. What I don't want to see is any kind of scratching, deep scratching, gouging, because that means something has gone wrong at some point, and that type of uh, damage will lead to failure as it continues to spin. I've got the wire connections taped up, and I'm going to lift this on. 
and now the backers in place and slid onto the studs. Next, I've got to clean out the um, residual brake dust that's mostly in the um, kind of corner of this. You can see that it comes off in chunks. It's just been kind of packed up in the corners of the drums. So the thing about the brake cleaner is that you don't want to spray it in where the bearings are um, because it will destroy the grease. And it's only about 9 a.m., so it's not actually super hot for the Texas heat. The next step here is to remove the inner axle seal and the bearing below it. I'm going to start with a hook tool. I may have to try harder than that. There's room for this seal to drop down a little. I'm really trying to get it up, but either way that it starts to break loose, we'll start it moving and then I should be able to lift it. you say the most frustrating part of this job is actually putting in the new one of these? Yeah, taking this out and, and kind of fearing doing any damage when you do it and then putting in the new one and getting it straight to slide down, probably the most... Time consuming for yeah, us. Yeah, time consuming. Because you just want to take it slow and careful and not just mash Bash. it and ruin something. <laughs> Bash. In the bucket we go with the old one. Final wipe to get any brake dust off of the bearing surfaces on the inside here. This is the larger of the two wheel bearings. This is the inner one. Um, I'm gonna pack it with grease and then I'm gonna slip it into the backside of the drum. The most important thing when you're repacking one of these bearings with, with grease or even just taking your bearings out to inspect them and put them back is you really need to be careful that you don't contaminate with any kind of sand or little rocks from the ground. There's a lot of that here and I have to be careful because I keep catching one being picked up on a tool and I don't want to put that rock in, in with the grease into the bearing surfaces. Just gonna reset the bearing in and then I'll put the seal on and pound it into place. I would say this is the most frustrating part of this is just getting this seal to start straight. It wants to just rock sideways and then it's essentially diagonal and doesn't fit in the hole. Up. Start again. Um, this is pressed in. Actually, Shauna took over for me. I was getting frustrated. It just wants to ride crooked. Um, Shauna took over and finished it up, and it's actually in there flat now. So we're ready to go back to the other side and put it on. Go team. So I'm re-greasing the spindle with fresh grease. I didn't really see any signs of rust here, but there was a slight rusty color to the grease that I wiped off. So. Mr. Tommy basically said you can't have too much grease. Not really. Not really, no. To reassemble this now with the drum on, I'm gonna take the smaller bearing that's on the um, outer side, and I'm gonna pack it with grease, put it on, and then I've got a washer, castle nut, and cotter pin. It's important when you're greasing these bearings before installation to get the grease on every surface and to rotate them a little bit so that it works the grease onto every possible crevice and surface that you can. Put the bearing in. Next comes this washer. Notice it's not round on the inside. There's a slot on the back of the axle. That allows this washer to go in and never spin with the castle nut tightened against it. Next is the castle nut. Just wanna make sure that starts on straight. Just had a little bit of a scary moment where I couldn't get the castle nut to start back on. Um, so this is a moment to point out that you wanna be very careful when you pull off the drum, not to bounce it off the threads at the very end of the spindle, because if you can't restart the castle nut because the threads are messed up, that's gonna be a world of hurt. Um, I took a wire brush, cleaned up the threads inside the nut, and then around the spindle, and then miraculously, this is going back on. So I don't, um, the fear of cross-threading this and ruining the spindle means buying a new axle. So what I'm doing right now is tightening down the castle nut, and there's still a little bit of play here. And what I'm gonna do is tighten this and check for play, tighten this and check for play. It could be that the bearing kind of seats falsely going in, and then when we're banging down the road, it actually gets tighter. Let me get a prop. As the bearing, there's a taper to the axle and as the bearing slides in, it may stop prematurely and it seems like it's tight. And then when you bounce down the road, the bearing may actually fully seat in, 
which means this will wind up loose and the castle nut isn't tight enough. So it's important to tighten the castle nut, check for any play here, tighten the castle nut. You're gonna tighten it and then eventually, when it seems like everything's tight, the drum still spins easily, you're gonna back off the castle nut just enough to be able to slide the cotter pin through. I'm pretty comfortable with how tight this is. And then I'm pretty close to the cotter pin hole, so I'm really only gonna have to go back very slightly and slide the cotter pin through. All right. Now you're ready for a tire. Let's go to the other side. One of the good things about a double axle trailer is we can use our leveling blocks to get one axle just high enough to get this tire off the ground and pull it off. We only had a half inch of clearance, but it's really all we needed to take off this tire. Which brings me to another point. This is a brand new tire. And thanks to one of our campground neighbors, we paid for our tires over a discount tire. So thank you to our campground neighbor, Tommy. He's, um, he's awesome. He's been giving us advice as we're dealing with the brakes, if I got questions and whatnot, but he was also willing to take one axle's worth of tires to discount tire, sit there and wait for him to mount them up and bring them back. So now we've got this axle done, brakes and tires. We're working on this one. He's away right now getting the, um, tuning tires for this axle. Yeah, we meet the most awesome people on the road. Yeah, thank you again to Tommy. Because we have the truck hooked up to the trailer when we're only on one axle, we can't drive away to get the new tires. So he was willing to take the tires and do all that work, do the waiting. And um, also thank you to Artie. She was awesome giving us a lot of information on some work camping opportunities that we may um, we may fo follow through on. So, so thank you there too. I had a minor panic moment yesterday. Did the first one, went over to the other side, and I had a right side brake sitting in the box there. And I had a brief moment of panic that I may have installed a left side brake on this side. I had no memory of actually looking at the box to verify. Um, you didn't do it wrong, though. I didn't do it wrong. I didn't do it wrong. So but you must I just, have looked. I must have looked. Yeah. But what I would say is when you get ready to do this, set your rights on the right, your left's on the left, and double check because it's really easy to look at the box twice as opposed to do the brake work twice. I know that I said I wasn't gonna film each wheel's individual brake job, but I did find something interesting on this one. Um, if you look up here, there's kind of rust on the surface of this pad. Um, I didn't find that on any of the other ones. If this brake had really been actuating, um, that should be scrubbed off in the last little bit of travel we did. And yeah, the rust in here suggests that this brake has been underworking at best and maybe doing nothing. So that's kind of the point of why we're doing this. We need to make sure all our running gear is, is up to snuff. Um, I don't see anything wrong with this drum, so I think if we replace the backer, make sure the electrical connections are good, we can individually inspect all these brakes to make sure each one of them is working and adjusted correctly before we get back on the road.